Hi there, welcome to the Hands Up For Trad afternoon show. It definitely looks like summer is over. It hasn't stopped raining all day. The plants and my weeds are very happy though. It's party time for them. And we're going to have a party here today. I hope you like that little join. And if you're enjoying this show, remember and share it with your friends. And please tell us where you're watching from. I love hearing about all your various destinations. We have some brilliant guests today, old and new, but equally sparkly. Please welcome Blazing Fiddles and Nos. <laughs> How are you all today? Good. Sparkly. Oh, yeah. Sparkly. <laughs> Craig, I was thinking that me and you are the only Dune Soothers. Uh, today. I think so, yeah. Is that what you call yeah, us in Kirkwall, yeah. Kristen? <laughs> uh, there's a few names for it, Simon, but that's one of them. Well, first up today, we have a funny video from the very talented Ewan Henderson. Remember to check out his albums, Jal, at ewan henderson.com. In days of yore, old Scotland had its heroes by the score. There was Wallace, Bruce, and Robbie Burns, a high and dozens more. But where today can you find them who'll bring to Scotland fame? Indeed, there's very few that at this moment I could name. Well, there's you and me, and me and you, to mention only two. I with you and me, and me and you, what couldn't Scotland do? We're just the last to make the Scot renown a land and sea. It's just a pity no one's ever heard of you and me. The way the whisky's sent abroad, it isn't fair at all. If all the stocks were kept at home, the price would surely fall. Aye, if I'm away, they wouldn't send a drop across the foam. But still I cannot see how we could drink it all at home. Well, there's you and me and me and you. Ah, aye, that's very true. Without you and me and me and you, I don't know what they'd do. Of course we might require the help of another two or three. But still we'd manage very well. With only you and me. Yo! Fun. <laughs> ah, fantastic. He's really, what a character. <laughs> so please welcome Blazing Fiddles. Today from the band we have fiddlers Kristen Harvey, Jenna Reed, Bruce McGregor and multi-talented fiddler and guitarist Annie Anamasi. How are you doing guys? Good. Brilliant, thank you. Yeah. I should say hello to Angus Lyon and Rua McMillan who can't be here today. Now, Bruce, in 1998, when the original band came together, did you still think you would be doing it 22 years later? Not in the slightest. It was meant to be for a one tour, a one week tour. That was it. Uh, the five gigs um, finished. I think we played in Balnain House. We played in Glenfinnan House Hotel, Straffy. Um, Straffy Hall was our first ever gig. And uh, that was that was it. Uh, but it was such a good laugh. We ended up doing another year for the Highland Festival and uh, it became a band. As I say, it was never meant. It was a stramash at the end of the night uh, and the stramash was so popular with uh, the, the folks who were coming to the gigs that uh, we uh, that's how the band started, really, by default, <laughs> rather than anything else. And Anna, you were the first of the, the new guns to arrive in 2008. What was that that's like? Right, yeah. <laughs> um, it was... It was a sort of perfectly timed uh, thing. It happened in, in a weird sort of way. When I was the first ever DEP the year before, Mark Clement was unable to make a couple of gigs. So I had done a gig in the Platform in Morecambe and one in the Gala Theatre in Durham. Then never thought anything else of it. About, about nine or ten months later, I got a call to go and do a Celtic Connections festival club slot with the band um, one Friday night I think the band played on the Saturday and that was the evening that Mark and Aidan announced they were leaving and then I got a call the next day from Bruce while I was making my way around Tesco Extra Netherland asking if I'd be up for uh, joining the band and it was it was 
the perfect time. I wasn't that long out of uni. Um, I was able to do all of the gigs. It was a total, it was a total uh, dream come true. Really, I'd been a fan of the band for ages before and was delighted. So that's great. It's kind of weird then to to be a part of a band that you've been listening to, but it's cool. Yeah, well, I found this uh, old video of you, Bruce. Ian McFarlane and Andy Thorburn from 2011 and basically Andy has a plan for world dominance using shakers and dancing. <laughs> I think we should watch it. <laughs> yeah. Come on, here we go. I tell you, we're going to get bookings all over the world with this. Make the bus game. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> well, you know, uh, Andy was right. <laughs> well, <laughs> I think that was the last that time. That is the first thing well. Facebook. <laughs> My God. So, Jenna, you joined the band in 2010, and Chris and Rua in 2014. I think it's fair to say, Jenna, that the band has a renewed energy with this lineup. What do you think? Uh, I mean, you've always had great times with Blaze and Fiddles, but you seem to be having a really good time now. Oh, it, it's it's just brilliant. It's it's a hoot. It's one of these things where you get, all go on stage and everyone's just having a laugh and we're taking our jobs seriously, but at the same time, we, you know, if anything ridiculous happens, it's just hilarious and, and uh, it does from time to time and it's a, it's a great bunch of people to work with and play music with, so feel very lucky indeed. Yeah, I'll bet, actually. Now, Kristen, do you some mm-hmm. feel that sometimes that having a much older band member like Bruce keeps you <laughs> grounded? <laughs> I'd like to... the off button on this thing. <laughs> <laughs> I think maybe it's the other way around for Bruce and myself. <laughs> <laughs> And, but do you ever like? Do you ever get like confused when the said older band member starts growling and running about the stage? <laughs> I think there are several videos possibly on uh, on the social media of me looking very confused at certain moments. Well, luckily I've got one here. <laughs> <laughs> so let's have a look. Let's for our viewers at home. Let's have a look at Bruce growling and running round the stage. <laughs> That's amazing energy you've got, Bruce. <laughs> I, I think it's sponsored by Famous Grouse. Uh... <laughs> Now, Bruce, I mean, I've always been a fan of the band right from the off, and I still love the Fire On album. You've always got great tunes. How do you consistently come up with great material? I think it's very much a a, a democratic process, to be quite honest, and it wouldn't work if it was anything else other than that. Um, In the old days, it was really quite brutal. You would play a tune to the rest of the band, and they would either go nah, yeah, that's crap, get out of here. It was, it was really quite brutal. It's a lot more sedate these days. If somebody puts a tune forward that nobody likes, you kind of nod your head and then somebody will come for a cup of tea or walk out for a Oh, hang on, like I've had that. Is that what that is? <laughs> yeah, it's a lot more subtle these days. I think that's, that's probably... <laughs> but the, the great thing is, uh, because everyone's geographically spread and we're all playing music with other folk as well, it means that we have got this massive array of tunes to, to bring to the, the pot. And I think that has always, has always helped. But it, it's, it's always fun trying to put things together into sets. And, you know, we've had sets in the past where we thought, this is going to work. This is going to be an absolute... In fact, this is a favourite line from the past oh, this will be one of these sets of reels that we start off and we just keep it really groovy and it doesn't get too fast. That never happens. It always starts off like that and then by the third performance, it's up about oh, 30, 30% or something like that. So it's, uh, uh, and, and I think also we've never tried to be too clever um, with the, 
you know, you can spend a lot of time getting arrangements beautifully orchestrated and and that works. You've got to remember how it works when it goes live. You know, when you take it from being in the recording studio to performing it live and being able to do it comfortably. Well, who who brought the tune to the band Anne Lacey? Liz Carroll's Anne Lacey, because we're going to watch that video and uh, I think it was from Johnson Town Hall and I love it. It's such a great tune. That was Bruce. <laughs> that was me. I think I heard it. Um, I just heard it on a recording. I, I hadn't realised some other people had recorded it at all. It had bypassed me on... Um, I think Duncan Chisholm recorded it, actually, I've just found out yeah, in the last week. he just put that... Was That That was one of his um, uh, Covid Kaylee tunes the other day, and he mentioned, was it Red Point, maybe, that he'd recorded it on, like an older yeah. album? But I, I, I missed it, and I just heard Liz, Liz playing it and thought, oh, my God, we that would just be such a good tune for us to play. And I think, you know, once we started playing it together, the excitement... We started playing it on tour and just getting the, the groove going for it. The excitement every night was uh, palpable. Well, it looks like you're having a great time when you play this, so let's watch it. That's fantastic. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> so, I mean, so, I mean, you, uh, I remember Blade and Fizzles went to Boston many years ago. Was it Blazing in Boston? Was was that you, Bruce and Jenna? Um, yes, I think oh. Anna was there as well. Yeah, uh, everybody. Was it? The, yes, it, it was. was the new band that went, wasn't it? The whole band went, and we took sound man Gareth, who had an American passport and just was delighted with himself. So. <laughs> it was utterly bizarre. It had been something we'd been planning and doing for a while, uh, taking the whole idea of Blazing and Bewley and then taking it over to America and to Boston. And we met up with the wonderfully eccentric Jerry Bell, who put us up in his his uh, coach house place. Um, we thought it was perhaps a little bit closer to Boston than uh, we were led to believe. It, it turned out to be an hour and a half <laughs> in and out in the morning. So, But the first thing we did, we arrived there, and Jerry loves getting dressed up. I don't know if you remember Jerry, uh, Simon, from Edinburgh Times. He used to play in a lot of the sessions and things, uh -huh. and uh, he, he's over there, and he said, look, some of you can go at the house. You're probably really tired, but I just need one or two of you to get dressed up as pirates and come along to this launch <laughs> of a champagne and uh, champagne launch. And I think there was a was that a rum or something like that? So mm -hmm. I think it was a seven to one. We all dived at the chance of getting dressed up as pirates. <laughs> and that was our introduction to Boston. It was <laughs> utterly bizarre. Well, I mean, another one of your uh, more recent international trips was Celtic Colours in 2018. And Jenna, we are going to play the Gamekeeper's Cottage uh, set. Now, I have to say, I always, th when I think about Lacey Fiddles, I often think about reels like Anne Lacey's and everything, but actually, as a band, you've got, you're all fabulous air players. Where did this tune come about, Jenna? Um, it's a tune that I wrote for my friend Harris Playfair um, for a house that, well, he bought, he'd kind of spied it and, and really wanted to, 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 to get it in the borders, a tiny wee hamlet called Fogo. And uh, it's beautiful. It's, and the name of the house is Gamekeeper's Cottage. So it was a wee housewarming for him and Heather. And um, yeah, just a wee ditty. And it, uh, it worked with the four fiddles really nicely and uh, piano and guitar. So it was really, we did it in Mull for the first time. I remember we, we sat around in the theatre in Mull um, a few years ago now and worked it out. And as Bruce said, it was one of these things that kind of came around fairly kind of straightforward nothing super fancy just um we just went with it and then that arrangement kind of stuck from then on in so it's um yeah we tuned for harris and heather well before we hear it we're just if you want to find out about more about blazing fiddles if you there are web addresses on the screen blazing fiddles.com 
and they'll be back a little bit later on to talk about the amazing Blaze and Blazing in Bewley. But let's watch the game. Listen, the, well, we'll do all three. <laughs> watch the game, Kiefer's Cottage. Absolutely beautiful. Uh, a few shout outs. Oh, and I must, if you are enjoying the show, please remember and share it amongst your friends. And now let's say hello to Fiona Morrison. Good afternoon. Hi, Philip. Uh, Raining in Norwich again. Rebecca Lochran Muir. Hi, Rebecca. Look, looking forward to hearing more music, more live music again. Hi, Vincent from Daff and Cool. Leads on the, and there's uh, Tom from Wawet Motherwell. <laughs> There's someone from um, Fashion Island. wonder where that is. Jan, where's Fashion Island? Um, who else? Um, Tom from a wet Salisbury Plain. Robert Armour would love to join in, but he has to work. Oh, come on, Robert. Uh, Maria Barclay from Shetland. <laughs> Albert our Blaine Doe saying, Andy is the man. That's when we were playing Andy Thorburn's video. And there's Tom, Ch- Tom Choi from Japan. Richard from Anglesey, Derek from uh, the Johnston Town Hall. I think he was at that last pre-lockdown wow. gig. Uh, <laughs> Kenny Sinclair, Ian Masson saying so pleased I've caught this. And there's Joyce Be- Joyce Beaton from Western Canada, and she loves that tune, Jenna. And uh, oh, in fact, she played it last night in Canada with her fiddlers on Zoom. There you go. Oh. Uh, James Kyle. Beautiful tune. Kathleen, hi from Bewley. Kathleen Moyer Simpson from Bewley. And uh, oh, and there's Marianne Horn waving from Germany. Fantastic. Anyway, next up, what do we have next up? Next up, we have NOS. <laughs> See, we've got an audience just waiting for you here. <laughs> So please welcome fiddler and mandolin player Graham Rory and bowden player Craig Baxter from the band. Graham, who are the other members of NOS? 
Uh, so we've got Aidan Moody. He plays guitar and sings the songs. He's from Orkney as well. And we've got Craig, uh, Craig's here. We've got Connor Sinclair. He plays flutes and whistles. Um, yeah, Connor's a, a very successful Highland piper as well. Award winning. Yeah, he is. He's, um, he's pretty amazing with the bagpipes, but completely refuses to play them worse. <laughs> he decides to pick up his second and third instruments and still be stolos in <laughs> yeah. playing my first. <laughs> oh, that's terrible. You can't say that about yourselves. Um, now, Craig, uh, you have been very busy during this lockdown, lockdown uh, time. You have uh, set up a Patreon page and preparing me- material from your new album. Yeah, that's right. Um, so we thought uh, just just before we kind of went into lockdown, we'd try and uh, get a bit of content sorted for however long we, uh, we'd not be able to play together for. So we, we recorded a few videos at Connor's flat. Um, so we've been using them on our Patreon page and then also just doing uh, like videos of ourselves playing and some tutorials and stuff. So yeah, lots of uh, content been going up for the last yeah two months or so. So um, um, and what, yeah, and what techniques, Graham, have you been used to kind of, pr- how do you get material together when there's, when you can't actually see anybody? Yeah, it's been a tricky one, just trying to think outside the box a wee bit. Um, we obviously, we've got three kind of singles recorded of new stuff we've been working on. And we've got all them done in the one day and we've just distributed them through the um, kind of schedule of the Patreon. Everything else, everybody's got their day every couple of weeks that they need to do something <laughs> and if we're really stuck for ideas we'll put ones back and forth but it's been interesting hearing folks feedback if folks wanted to maybe a particular tune that they want to learn or putting up sheet music or maybe speaking about effects pedals and things just trying to say a wee bit more about us rather than just music videos and, which is sometimes more interesting than other times and, and, <laughs> and if you sign up to your patreon you get to watch is it whole videos uh, yeah, so there's um, the three whole videos of the new tracks, and we also got some brilliant videos from a, a shop, Andy Inns in Belpa. Um, it was brilliant. He sent through a Dropbox link of a whole gig that he'd filmed back in November. And he said, this is all for you to use, pop them up if it's handy for Patreon. So it's kind of exclusive live content. I think it'd be quite nice for thought to you're getting to see a gig as if you're sitting at the back of it and there's real life folk listening with you. Well, if anyone would like to find out about it, the address is on the screen, patreon.com forward slash NOS music. But we're going to watch a video now from one of your patrons. It's a couple of, it's a set of tunes and it's a saw, a couple of clips. Let's have a watch at this. <laughs> album you're uh, drawn from deep water released in 2019 was that your first full length album uh, yeah it was so uh, the first um the thing we did together as a photo piece was an ep called brother winds which we released kind of april two years ago i think but then um yeah that, that, that was the first kind of full length uh, album album we've worked on so it's kind of had to think it's been it for a whole a whole year already but um yeah and it's a great cover. I've just been looking at the cover on screen. Who did that drawing? Uh, oh, it's a brilliant artist called uh, Orla Stevens. So um, she took a photo of us playing through a uh, Edinburgh folk club, and then and then just did this amazing kind of uh, oil painting of that. And then we took it up to the uh, the Hermitage, kind of just near kind of Dunkeld and Pressure, um, and got some photos of Marsh, uh, Martin Venner, and used that for the for the album cover. 
Ah, amazing. And um, so I know this is difficult, Graham, but what is, what's next for the band? Oof. Um, well, we're hoping to go in and record a new album um, at the end of this year. So we've been kind of working away, filling more time. We're writing new tunes and songs and things and just using the joys of technology to ping that back and forth. Um, obviously, we can't play together, but we're just kind of slowly working the stuff up to record that. And then once everybody's raring to get out again and come to live gigs, we're going to shout at them until they buy the new CD. <laughs> it's the main plan. plan yeah. Craig, yeah. Anne Downey has just said, you have brightened up a very wet, miserable day. Well done, Craig Baxter. <laughs> oh, thanks very much. Yes, that's Anne Downey. Yeah. <laughs> um, we are going to uh, watch a video of Three Shores. Is, uh, what is that song, Graham? Um, that's one that Aidan wrote. Um, he doesn't really tell us, but he writes them about... Um, <laughs> You can sign up to the Patreon and you'll tell you in a big spiel. But um, it's a song that we recorded. It was, um, I think it's the first track on the last album. And we did that video with Bees Knees a few months ago. It was really good. Like any video shoot, it was freezing cold. So we don't look quite healthiest. But uh, yeah, it's a one eight in songs. Well, that sounds great. Let's have a listen to it. Tell me where you've been Have you filled silos I used to know Ours was a dull and hopeful crown Time turned its gold to brown Pole star, did you draw me to this heart? Further than hands can reach Cause our ships pass and pass again And cloud over cliff we drift, we spin And our ships pass and pass again And cloud over cliff we drift Cause I roll aisle to aisle Stay a while till the land crumbles to sand around my toes. North Sea, won't you show me what you've seen? Ha. Great track, great track. That's Philip McHenry loving that track <laughs> on the comments. So, um, as we have two Arcadians on the programme, I thought we should have a discussion on how brilliant the Orkney music scene is. Is it, Kristen? <laughs> I should say yes, yeah, shouldn't I? <laughs> no, I'm joking. It is, uh, it's, um, it's incredible. Um, thanks to a lot of different people up there. It's, um, it's just all go. It's been the same for a few years now, I think. It's just taken off. and There's things like uh, the Orkney Traditional Music Project and uh, Douglas Montgomery teaching in schools um, and uh, the Wrigley sisters were the real there's just there's just so many outlets for music up there especially fiddle playing and accordion playing I think but many other things for by. And, so. uh, and in 2019 Jean Leonard MBE was inducted into the Scottish Traditional Music Hall of Fame can you tell us about Jean Kristen? <laughs> God um I'll try and make this as succinct as I can, but she's she's uh, she's unlike anyone I've ever met before. I was so so lucky to well to have her in my life, basically not just not just as a teacher, but as a kind of mentor and and somebody who just pushed me all the time. And uh, I was one of many that she did that for. And everybody has a story about Jean. Um, she's she's a comedian in her own right and. 
there's a few things that that got said to us that wouldn't be allowed anymore but just loved it <laughs> and uh, she was our hero really so she's and she's still on the go i went to visit her uh, a few months ago and she had uh eight or nine kids running about her house and she was making the dinner for them and they were all practicing in different rooms and she's just a machine so yeah very well deserved i would say that's fantastic and, Ar- and graham orkney also has a, a brilliant uh, folk festival and one of the things in 2019 nos you took over the running of the orkney gate gathering so, yeah, um, it's it's been a massive part of the festival. I think maybe seven or eight years that they've been running it. And it's um, been involved in ones for years. So it was a massive honour to take that on in 2019. We did it at the Orkney Festival in 2018 and then took it down to Celtic Connections. I think we had 52 folk at most on the stage at the fruit market. So logistically, it was a bit of a nightmare. But it was a, a pretty special night. It was really, really good. Well, we're actually going to watch a, a video of your encore from that very gig. And there's Derek Smith on the comments saying the Orkney Gathering at Celtic Connections 2019, led by Graham and Aidan with Farah and Saltfish 40, was one of the best Celtic concerts we have been to. There you go. It must have been good. <laughs> I'll pay him later. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's uh, look at this video. I think you're playing the reconciliation, and uh, it sounds fantastic and looks like a lot of fun. <laughs> Fantastic, great. Well, um, we want to welcome back Blazing and Fiddles, but today we are going to talk about the amazing Blazing and Bewley. How did this start, Bruce? Uh, well, basically, I'd been going to schools, uh, teaching at fiddle schools from Sky to America, and uh, I'd always thought they were getting a lot of things right, and then you would see other things from the um, from the teacher's point of view that wasn't quite right, and I thought, well, how about we get something that will really suit all the participants and the teachers? And it was, I suppose it was looking at it that way because I taught at a few fashion that, honest to God, I thought uh, A, the participants were being worn to the ground by the amount of teaching they were getting in one day and B, the tutors were about to kill each other because they were being asked to do so much. So I thought, right, we can make this a lot more informal. Uh, and we also thought that as well as the teaching, it was the, the social aspect. The teaching uh, was important, but the sessions, the Kaylee dancing, having the time to talk to people and make it really sociable so that the music fitted into a, a more of a picture than just learning tunes and just being this kind of um, program of, of tune teaching. And uh, it's grown arms and legs. I mean, even for the first one, I think we had... We had I think we had 150 folk at it. It's now up to about 200 odd. Jenna knows because Jenna actually basically organises the whole thing these days. Well, um, I think that's my next question, actually, then, because Jenna, <laughs> um, am I right in saying that the the event is completely self-funded? Yeah, um, since Bruce began this whole adventure of Blazing and Bewley all these years ago, it's just uh, looked after itself, really. And... Um, Within that, we, we invite one, sometimes two guests to join us for the week. And as Bruce says, we kind of have the timetable set so that it works for us and it works for everyone else. So we have a the morning, the first half of the day with lessons, fiddle, guitar, piano and voice. And um, we've added in singing and uh, different activities like that. And then the afternoon is more of kind of like choices with master classes and um, different things available, which kind of pulls in the guest aspect of things. And as Bruce says, it's just that the, the community that we're in in Bewley has welcomed the, the whole thing with open arms and has been there to support us with different spaces that we need to use, with 
raffle prizes, you name it, they're there and they're involved. And so it's very much a, a, a growing thing between us and the people of Bewley. Um, it wouldn't be the same anywhere else, really. Was well, 2019 a bit of a record year? Yeah, yeah. I think it was. <clears throat> I mean, as we'll see, we're going to watch a, a video in a moment. Uh, but uh, Anna, in, in this video that we're going to watch, um, there's a part of it where you are teaching a, a beautiful air to a whole room full of musicians and it just looks like it must be the best place to be in the world. Yeah, it was um, It was a pretty special thing. It was a bit... It was a strange thing last year because um, Rick Taylor had been a massive part of Blazing and Beauty for years and he sadly died um, in, I think, May, June last year. So this was the first time that we didn't have Rick leading our group work and the ensemble was a massive part of the week. Loads of people came specifically because they loved uh, being part of Rick's group um, and we decided to try not to... We didn't want to replace him with somebody else. It wouldn't be fair... Um, to ask anybody else to come in and 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 take over from him, and we did, you know, we wanted to try and keep it the same kind of feel as Rick had had in the group work, and so we thought that to to do that ourselves might be the, the easiest way to keep it feeling the same. So we started off with everybody in the middle of the Phipps Hall in in Bewley, just in a in a big circle, and it seemed like the easiest way to be seen and heard by everybody was just to stand in the middle and. Uh, shout and sing at them and it was a, quite an incredible place to stand in the middle of a, a hall like that with everybody playing it, was, it, it, it also uh, meant that Anna could teach in her pyjamas and slippers because that was a thing <laughs> very keen on I was like, keeping in Rick's a real uh, legacy of Rick's <laughs> uh, and I know in 2019 you also hosted your very first fun run and I noticed <laughs> The, um, only Angus and Jenna seem to take part in it. And where, what were you doing, oh, Tristan? No, that's not uh, technically fair, Simon. Uh, <laughs> Rudy also took part. Oh, yes, we did. Yes, well, we're going to see him in the video, but he doesn't seem to be doing very much running. <laughs> <laughs> some people are built for running and others are not, Simon. And uh, I think that's why some are running in this and some aren't. <laughs> Well, this video, I've, put, I've sort of compiled a few clips together from various uh, clips last year, and I have to say, it looks amazing. And if anyone, after watching this video, doesn't want to attend Blazing and Bully, there's something wrong. <laughs> so let's watch the video. <laughs> I just want to do a few shout outs actually before we head towards the the quiz. I just want to say hi, hi to Linda from Texas. She saw Blazing Fiddles at Celtic Connections in 2018 and thought it was wonderful. Hi to Mimu Jogida. And there's Catherine O'Hara who loves 
your sound blazing fiddles and sa- sadly missed you at Celtic Colours opening in Hawkesbury. Who else have we got? Um, here's Marianne McTeague. Great way. We've said hello to uh, Derek Smith. And there's Anna McNocker. Anyway, next up, we have the quiz. Oh, and we have a theme tune as well. Hold on, where is it? Where's my theme tune? <laughs> oh, oh, here it is. <laughs> And we have been joined by the Hands Up for Trad quiz master, the one and only Alana McKinnis. So she can have an applause as well. <laughs> Take away, Alana. Oh, well, I have enjoyed listening to the crack that everyone has had up till now. Are you all well and been practicing your quiz answers? Oh, yes. You've been yeah, reading your encyclopedias? A quiz one night and uh, it got really really competitive. <laughs> a be- uh, Beulie and Beulie, uh, Blazing and Beulie, sorry, or on Zoom? On Zoom. On Zoom. Oh, really? Have you been having Zoom quizzes? One. Just, we just <laughs> had one, and this is the first time we've spoken since. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> well, I'm glad that we can bring it together from the ha- from point of view of Hands Up for Trad, anyway. <laughs> Have you got your buzzers ready, folks? Let's hear what you've all got. Will we start with you, Craig? Oh, oh yeah, I've got uh, a practice pad for the drums there. Very good. Graham? Lovely. Thank you. Let's hear you, Jenna. <laughs> <laughs> Kirsten, what have you got yourself? Oh. oh. Hey, Anna? <laughs> yeah, flat <laughs> one. Who's that? <laughs> I, I missed miss Glasgow. <laughs> And Bruce, last but not least, what's your own buzzer? I've got the horn. Anyway, let's get started. So we're starting off with uh, an Arcadian theme here, so I hope you get these folk from Orkney. Oh, no. Question one. Who owns the St. Magnus Cathedral? Jenna? People of Orkney. Okay, that's true. <laughs> Bonus question. What is the anniversary of the formation of the Hudson Bay Trading Company, which was set up by Arcadians? Graham Nori. Is that the anniversary this year? Yeah. 350th. Magic. Good on you. Hold on. <laughs> 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 Question two. In 2019, which world record did Stonehaven Folk Festival gain? Graham? That was the world's biggest Kaylee band. That's right. And do you know how many people were in it? No. 350. No. <laughs> Not quite. 84. Uh, no. <laughs> 288. Oh. Now, uh, you can check out the Hands Up for Trad website for a great opportunity for 2020 at that festival. Anyway, let's move on to question three. Fiddler Johnny Cunningham wrote the music for an award-winning play in the 90s. Does anybody know what the play was called? Is that you, Anna, or someone yeah, at the door? Yeah, it was... <laughs> it's, it's the postie, he maybe knows. <laughs> um, was it the big picnic? Uh, nope. Was it Peter Pan or something like that? It was Peter Pan, but do you know yeah. what the It was about Peter Pan, but do you know what the name of it was? Oh. Will I tell you? Yeah, it's annoying me now. It was called Peter and Wendy. Ah. And it was based get, on Peter Pan. Did I get half a point? Wow. I'll give you half a point. (laughs) Uh, Bonus question about Johnny Cunningham. Which band did Johnny play with his brother Phil and Tarina Negro? Oh. Relativity. That's right. That's right. Question four. In what year was the Shetland Fiddle Society formed? Jenna Reid. 1960. Uh, Yeah. Bang on. 
Oh. <laughs> right. Bonus question. What was the name of the masked fiddlers that opened their concerts? Pardon? Uh, the Sh Fetland, uh, I'm guessing it's for the Shetland Folk Festival, is it? The masked fiddlers oh. that opened their concerts. Jenna? Do you mean the Shetland Fiddler Society? Yes. Yes, sorry. Is that the answer to the question? The name for it. So, <laughs> what was the name of the masked fiddle, fiddlers that opened for the, the Shetland concert? Fiddle Society? Concerts. The 40 fiddlers? Uh, yeah. <laughs> 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 that was it. Good for the <laughs> The last question is a kind of a math question, and hopefully you were listening earlier on to some of the answers. Oh God! So, how many in the world? How many folk make up the world's largest Kaylee band, the Forty Fiddlers, the Sana, Nos, and Relativity? What? So there we have the the largest Kaylee band. The Forty Fiddlers, the Sana, Nos, and Relativity. Anyone quick on their maths? 430. Oh. 330. Not quite, but I'll give it to you since it was pretty close. The answer was 340. Oh. <laughs> Good Good I wasn't sure how many were in Sana, to be quite honest. No. <laughs> well, it was a good guess. Thanks, Thanks very, very much, much, guys. Interestingly, hey. actually, I had a, I found a video of Kristen's band, The Sana, oh, no. from 2011, and I, I've been looking for one for a long time, and I finally found one from Orkney Folk Festival in 2011. Oh. Simon, yes. yes. before we go, uh, I've just got to come back to something about Alan Henderson, who was on your show a few weeks ago, who commented on some of the dancing that Blazing Fiddles had, perhaps, and I think he said... <laughs> Perhaps Bruce danced like a man who, <laughs> a bank manager at an acid party, I think it was. <laughs> this is the same man who forgot that he'd actually done the dead fly at the Heb Kelt Festival <laughs> and lay on the ground and was spun round on his back and then had to be helped up like an old man off the floor. He never talked about that, does he? <laughs> Um, I think we also need to give a special mention to Gina Leslie who's watching and uh, she got well she's saying she got one she was a wrong typo but I think she got one question right so well done Gina <laughs> <laughs> she's a school teacher isn't she yeah she should be working <laughs> <laughs> anyway Thanks to everyone for watching and to Creative Scotland for their support. Uh, we will be back on Monday, 15th of June at 2pm with more guests, including another Arcadian supergroup, Saltfish 40. Um, if you're looking for something to do tonight, why don't you join the Hands of a Trad, Strasby and Real Society, which is a big society on Zoom. And you can find out more about that by going to strasbyandreal.co.uk. But thanks very much, guys. It's been brilliant having you on. Thank, Thank you very much, Simon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I'll see you the next time.